All right, well. <clears throat> let's get into this let's play. A high damage unit can miss if its attack is much lower than its enemy's unit's defense. Very, very true. Queen any uns unspoken respect strength is for this reason that they view your weak military with utter contempt. Hmm. Well, whatever. The cultists are, you know, bad mouthing me, but whatever. I'll probably attack these guys in a moment, but, uh. Let's just see how it goes. Alright, so. Basically at this point in like the, you know, the let's play, I've like sort of started out with like the Necrophage faction. And I've essentially settled the territory over here. I'm thinking for like the next little bit, what my plan will be is to sort of like sell these two areas, like basically conquer the ogres, um, villages up here and here, and um, you know maybe it's like sort of like keep to myself for a moment. The wall, this guy's here, I'm going to basically attack him, so we'll do that. He got away from me before he uh, could get hit. It's too bad that he got away like that, but this is something I know about these preachers. They basically have fairly good movement speed. Um, basically, these guys, the preachers, are support units for the cultists. And essentially what they're all about is essentially supporting other units. And the reason they get first is because what the hell the cultists basically work is that they're supposed to basically capture, um, like, you know, minor villages and then, like, make, make use of their units to basically, um, attack other people or do other stuff. And apparently that request, uh, failed, so, oh well. I'll try, still try tracing this guy down, I guess. And he's got another unit up there, apparently. He, of course, runs because he doesn't want to attack me, so I can experience my units here. I don't know if that's basically what I'm doing right now. I'm just basically getting experience from my guys. Attack! Oh, this time it's got dare preachers in range, but whatever. Alright, so... I haven't really basically gone over to cultists yet, because, you know, we've only just sort of started. But the cultists, basically how they sort of work here. They essentially have, like, support abilities, like, you know, unleash potential here. And how they sort of work is that they sort of are supposed to, like, buff other units. So basically, just like, it's like, you know, other units, like, you know, buff to everything that they do. And of course, they have unsteady to basically, you know, lower the attack of, like, other units that basically attack it.
All right, so what I'm gonna do here. I basically want these like guys to run and burst the um, the necrophage like you know uh, forgers because they can like disease these guys. I'm right. I have my audience too to make use of. Well, let's get in there and attack them. And that's basically what they start doing. They buff each other like that. Oh, he went into a hill there. And there's the first disease. You want that guy? And to be honest, I sort of want everyone to basically attack this guy where possible, so. I mean, this guy's just gonna die from disease anyway, so there's no point in really worrying about him too much. Or he'll get killed like this. Bye bye. You know, I kind of wish my forge just had, you know, pre-movement like the militia there, so that they could move like two spaces even when there's a forest. And yeah, there's one thing to note by, uh, by the way, but very careful about your units. Basically, something I know with the Nicker face is that, like, while the, like, say the hero has like disease immunity, there, you know, other heroes that recruit don't. So this guy's already, you know, taking like um, disease damage from like stuff, which is not, you know, optimal. Ooh, nice, I killed it. Right out right. And he's damage. There you go, I got some cadavers for that. So there are other guys that are somewhere around here, but um Whatever, I won't really worry about him, I guess. Too much. See, I main plan more or less for this episode is to sort of like keep to myself. Maybe come down here a little bit, explore this territory so I have like another place to put like, you know, settlers at some point. And how about you just go like this? At some point I should build another borough, I guess, here, but we'll get the public library first. Whoops, they moved right back over there. And apparently there's someone else down here in this direction, so... I probably want to claim this territory before I do anything, so... I'll keep going down here for now, I guess. Look like there's more ogres down here, too. You know what, we're going to do this, actually. Get a down here real quick.
And cool, I'm in a second era. Age of Glory! So I probably built the Museum of Aruga. Oh well. And Cannon Fodder! So, much like the uh, Vaulters, the Nickerfage have their own sort of like unique things. But the Vaulters, they have like sort of like unique structures, but with like the Nickerfage, they have like, you know, uh, sort of like unique like things like this. So they have like, you know, 50% redu reduction in military upkeep. And over here, they have stuff that basically lets them sacrifice their population for approval uh, rating for a little bit. So there's basically some interesting things that the Nickerfish have, kind of like the Vultures do. And wow, you're right up next to my city up here. I wish I could make this guy pop out to attack this guy, but oh well. And let's go over here. We'll get. Hmm. Let's get um, Emperor Mink going over here, I guess. I don't know. We'll get seed stores, I guess. More. More food would be good early on, I think. All right. So something to do right now. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start upgrading these guys real quick. So, right now, it's sort of no, no, no worry of that. It's better to have these guys have a high initiative. These, like, you know, um, these foragers. So, I'm actually going to give them the, the, the axe and shield, I guess, here. I could give them, like, the claws here, but they don't really need it for damage so much as they need it for, like, speed for disease ability. Basically, you want these guys to attack and run away, so to speak. The foragers, they're not really sort so, um, sort of like supposed to keep engaging the same enemy. And it'd probably be good if I gave them a little bit of increased movement. So there's a the new forager design. And here's the Nicker drones. These guys are really um, easy, or you know, interesting. Nicker drones. Basically, the foragers, if you look at them, they're sort of like you know, uh, uh, sort of like sit back and sort of wear down the guys if like you know attacks. The Nicker drones, however, are more like, you know, rush in and, and destroy guys. Basically, they have higher damage, they have um, higher attack. A little bit lower initiative, I think, but whatever. They also fly, too, these guys. So we're actually going to see our first flying unit, so to speak. I'll give them sharp sense. So there's that done. I wonder who's down here. I wonder if I want to attack the ogres maybe here. Probably not. Not just yet. Let's go this way. I figured he might do that, this guy here, but whatever. We'll attack these ogres. Alright, so how am I going to do this, I wonder?
Alright, so here's the basic plan I guess I'm going to go with. Um, I'm basically going to let these guys get closer over here. And I'm going to try, like, you know, disease one of them. I'm going to try and get closer, I guess. <clears throat> That's going to be the plan. Go right there. You can hold here for now. You can go here for now. Alright, that's perfect. Basically gonna have these guys attack these guys here. You keep moving for now. Basically, diseasing him there will do a whole lot of damage to him over time. So that's basically the reason for doing that. And this guy won't be able to, you know, sort of interact with him too easily. Uh, how about you go up here? Oh, that's bad. He stunned me right there. I wasn't hoping he would do that, but oh well. Nothing I really do about it now. And crap, he's going over here. You get to go here, I guess. He stung me again, the little bastard. Whatever, I damaged those ogres with a little bit of, like, you know, damage there, so I serve one. Sort of being the operative word there. Alright, so from the looks of it, it looks like this is an area where I probably want to build over here for settler. So that's what I'll probably do. Put some glass still there for now. I just start getting my um, my sewer systems up and running. I guess so. We'll start doing that for the happiest boost I'll need. All right, so basically I've got this cultist hero. Something I know about the cultist heroes is that they basically have like these very interesting. Um, you know, like, boost up everything type of ability. Boost up science. Boost up, you know, influence. And basically they can boost up, like, you know, money. So I got some very interesting, like, city-related stuff. Like, this like, goes all around the place. And I think what I'm gonna do with my heroes, I'm actually gonna make this guy also, like, you know, sort of like a city governor. 
And I'll worry about getting myself like an attack hero a little bit later on, I think. Will be the plan. You gonna attack me again? Yes, you are. Alright, so how are we gonna do it this time? I think we're gonna do this time. We're gonna have. Let's sort of go like this. You on here? Yeah, I'll go like this for now. We're gonna basically focus on hitting this guy with like disease and like the cultist hero to basically mow him down. And these guys are gonna get in a small attack, but hopefully, you know, they won't take too much damage. A little bit of damage on him. That worked out well. That's what I want to see, lots of zeros. That's the nice thing about the Necrophage. As long as they basically, you know, hit people, they damp they disease them, so you basically don't have to worry about like them doing damage. Damage there. I, unfortunately, I took a little bit more damage on the cultist hero there with, like, you know, disease, but whatever. There we go, he's down. Just what I want to see, sort of. The game wrecked. Now, it's worth knowing that as you basically get, like, you know, your cadaver count up, you'll basically get to, like, eight. Whenever you get an eight, you can actually get, like, this, like, recycled stockpile, which you can basically use to basically get more food on a city if you want. So, what I'm likely going to do here, I'm actually going to have, like, you know, um, I think what we're going to do. What am I going to do? I guess what I'll do, I'll, I'll put some, like, food on, like, uh, more in lack over here. So let's just do this now. We'll basically, like, you know, give that, you know, this city a big food boost right, right, right here. And I'll basically, you know, make it, like, bigger real quick. And cool. Build a thing for die. And down here we've got the Nidia. The Birdmen. Okay, you get to be a new army. There's a Mazari over there. Now, it's worth knowing that since I basically got, you know, so many orcs around, it makes sense I probably want to get the orcs in my army. Especially for ability cost reduction. So I'm going to simulate them right now. Apparently that cost me a lot of money for some reason to do it. Or maybe something like this cost me a lot of money to uh, sell it yet. Whatever. It'll be, uh, I'll build a new city it'll be over in a bit. <clears throat> okay, you go up here. Hey, 
Hey, it's winter time. Yes, lower reduction. Two moment, not that great. But whatever, my capitalist match gets itself a sewer system. And someone apparently pacified eight villages already, so that's been done. I think we'll build a Borough Street over here, perhaps. To start getting toward this stuff. And to get, like, the extra stuff over here. Now, if I want to, I could build a city right there, but I think it would be more prudent to build it, like, right here. You move right there. Alright, with that built, basically my, uh, you know, dust costs go down for a little bit. And I get my third, uh, count, you know, sort of region under, under my control. Now, part, something to note here is that basically I'm probably not going to build any more, um, you know, settlers from this point on. I'm just going to sort of like con start conquering people because I'm just getting too big for, you know, uh, myself at this point. It's great that I basically sell free region like this, but I also have to worry about, you know, my enemies like getting, you know, really strong. The cultists here, for example, are hostile, like crazy hostile. They'll start attacking me at some point if I don't watch it, so... Gotta watch out for it. I think we're just gonna get food here. Now, something I really want to do at some point is retrofit these guys, because I'll get so much, like, you know, um, better units out of doing so. What I'm likely going to do in the future is like keep focusing on like these economic texts, um, you know, texts that basically increase my money supply. Basically, anything that'll help me with like you know, um, you know, keeping these guys up is going to be beneficial. That's one of the things I know about this game. Early on, it's sort of hard to get the money to sort of keep doing stuff. Though Necroface sort of make it a little bit easier with this ability right here. Let's see here. Getting a native district might be good, but I only really have, you know, the orcs to basically contend with at the moment for my stuff. That reminds me, I can go in here and I can actually add the rumble here. So here's like the the, 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 the infantry unit for like the um, the Orcus tribes, basically the Ursus here. There's like their beam ability that basically lets them like, you know, hit stuff you know up to three targets away. They have sweet strike back if they, you know, have this on. If you want to, you can give them a, basically a giant club, which basically lowers the initiative. These guys here, they're actually really like, you know, um... They're, they're, they're better for, like, you know, sweeping at stuff more so than trying to stun it. So give them all this stuff, I guess. I might build a rumbler too, but I'll note that with, like, the necrophage, you want to sort of avoid minor faction units a lot of the time. Hmm. I'm losing money because of like, you know, the winter attrition at this point, so... Maybe do that a little bit. And for our next tech, I think what we're going to do, we're just going to go after the central markets, perhaps. 
Do I want to get this guy at some point too, the proliferator? The proliferators are fun, by the way, and I'll, it'll be fun when I basically start making use of them, but until then, it'll be like, you know, sort of waiting for it. There we go, money. Making money. Uh, you know, it's one of those things I want to get down to just basically hit this approval bo um, bonus down here, but... This is in such a, a pattern that it's going to be sort of hard to sort of develop it because, you know, it's basically got C's over here. I think this was the best place to put my C down, like this spot, but it's not going to be able to go to C very well, the more lack one. But anyhow, we'll attack these guys. <clears throat> And this is an interesting way of doing it. He's basically got one or orc over here and then like, you know, the other guy over here. Yeah, so let's attack like this for now. So we poison that guy. Here's a nice something, something nice about the monster, by the way. With like necrophages, basically I've diseased these guys, so they're gonna take damage from the foragers already. And since I don't really need to disease these guys again, I can sort of like move them away and sort of get them out, out of combat. So basically, the militia can start like doing a job that the foragers are gonna do, basically holding these guys down so they can't do anything. With luck, I, I should just kill these guys before they even have a chance to do anything really about it. Oh, there goes that ogre. Unfortunately, that guy got disease, but whatever. That's the thing about disease. It's not poison. It doesn't, like, you know, affect this one unit. It can spread to other units that aren't disease immune. There we go. That orc village is out of the way, or ogre village rather. I get two kid hours of my troubles. I get to go here next.
Now, something I'll watch out for is the fact that I'm losing food in one of those cities there because it doesn't produce enough food. That's just something about the, you know, the, the necrophage. They have, like, you know, good population bonuses that let them get more food later on, but early on they sort of suck with food. You know, it's funny. The necrophage, they're, they're kind of like the, um, the cravers from Endless Space in that um, they're sort of, like, time-based. The cravers in Endless Space, how do they sort of work? They basically suck early, um, you know, later on because early on they basically... They're stronger early on because basically they will um, get more bonuses and then later on they'll start losing those bonuses when like they like, you know, burn out plants. But in like um, Endless Legend here with like the necrophages, necrophages actually are worse early on, but they get better as the time goes progresses for them because basically they get more food and they basically get strong with like the military b uh, benefits and such. I really like how the necrophages are actually designed in this game because I actually play them. Never really played the, uh, the cravers in like Endless Space all that much because I didn't really like them as much. Do that. Ah, good. It's summer again. Let's see here. Let's attack these guys. Now, interestingly enough, we're going to have both the militia from cities attacking for these guys, so... Just stop all over them, basically. This doesn't matter where I put this guy. No, it doesn't. I should put him right there, I guess. All right, well. Attack! A little bit of damage my cultist, hero. Alright, these guys have done their purpose again, so they can just move out. You can actually attack here if you want. A little bit of damage to him. Yeah, they're basically saw a guy taking disease there, damage there. That's basically a result of him basically being pulled, I mean, you know, diseased from like these guys. Nice, more damage. And pop. More pops. So much damage. Unfortunately, I'm going to take disease damage my cultist here, but oh well. I think there are abilities that let you sort of like, you know, um, get get by disease ability. Like, something I know is like the, um, there's a few like minor factions that are basically immune to like, you know, diseases, so to speak. And then there's others, like, I think there's like equipment they can use to basically make guys immune if you need to. Funny how that's done. A couple more vill you know, villages and you know, or one more village and I'll basically be uh, 
Good to go, so to speak, for our stuff. We're going to start moving down toward this guy, I guess. You know what, let's try and go 50 turns with like, my, uh, my guys here. So move down to attack these guys. Oh, that's not good. Hmm. Alright, you're gonna see why this is a bad idea. So basically if you attack like this, you basically have to deal with like, you know, more of these like, you know, rumbles all at once. So you're basically gonna see me basically attack four rumblers with my guys here. Which is not ideal, so to speak. You're gonna go here, I guess. So, basic battle plan for this one will be sort of let this guy get closer, poison this guy initially. Sort of like stay out of harm's way for the moment. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Ow. Gonna move this guy here. We'll use this guy a little bit. And this guy there here. Basically spread this little over around. Lots of disease. I did that wrong, apparently. I moved my uh, cultist here, but it got, you know, slammed by that guy. Not exactly ideal. You get to go here. I should move this guy... To attack him, I guess. Nice. A lot of damage there. Oh, there's disease damage on my cultist here now. That's basically how the diseases work. Basically, if you're close to a guy when he gets disease like that, that's when you have it happen. Bad stuff happens. Let's go like this here, I guess. Ouch. I am hurting these guys a lot, but it's also hurting me a lot to fight them. And my guy just got stunned. Alright, um... 
You're gonna move here, I guess. I'm moving this guy here so if they, you know, if they start moving over here to, you know, get to these guys, they won't be able to get them his turn. Yep. No luck. They're gonna t kill those guys there. So I lost myself one of my necrophage units here. Unfortunate. I don't think I'll lose these guys, but they're going to take some damage. If I don't move them here. But here's why basically you don't like fight, you know, minor villages when there's like, you know, guys out and about near them, because basically they can join the fight. And then you basically got this like huge fight to deal with. Now, something I know is that my cultist hero fell in that battle, but basically because like he's a hero, he's like, got this like a last stand that basically lets him resurrect. So he has like no health, but he's basically still alive. Now, note by the way, I got cadaver there. That's basically because my unit died there, like the necrophage unit. So even if, if even if your own units die, you basically get the cadavers for it. So it's good if you you know sort of fight and fight and fight, so to speak. And we're gonna start building Nickel Drones in the future. You know what, this is actually probably a good time to stop the episode, I think. We lost a, a battle there. These guys aren't really gonna be able to keep going after these ogres very well when they're like weak like this. I will probably go after these ogres at some point, but I'll have to wait a little bit before attacking them again, I think. So call it quits here. I'll see you guys in the next episode.